12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday, February 6th. Yeah, we made it to Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, kind of a cold morning. We weren't used to having such cold mornings for a little bit. Yes, and we have an update on the pollen count, too. Anything interesting happening out there regarding allergens, Justin? So I'm not an allergist. I always have to preface that. Okay. But uh, I think it's fair to say that mountain cedar season is winding down. The reason I say that is we've had some gusty winds and we had some cheers. I like that. Uh, and mountain cedar has not really jumped up. It's low today at 10. We typically say Valentine's Day is our day in which we can uh, kind of officially say goodbye to cedar season. Looks like we may be doing that a little bit earlier than this year. We started a little bit earlier, so I, I like the way this pollen count looks. Nothing to worry about today, and I know there's a lot of people rejoicing uh, that we are through, almost through, cedar season. KSAT 12 hour forecast, noon time 62. We're up around 69 this afternoon. A beautiful, beautiful day. Mostly sunny skies. Uh, we're not going to see much in the way of cloud cover uh, and then down into the 50s tonight. Lots of sun today. That does change tomorrow. We'll start off with some fog. And uh, I think we'll have that not only tomorrow, but probably Thursday too. So the commutes can be uh, affected by that. Then we'll look for some spotty rain Friday through Sunday. Nothing that's going to be terribly heavy or widespread, so don't cancel your weekend plans. But no, there are some chances mixed in there uh, during that time frame. And we've had a couple questions about when will we see our last freeze? What is the average last freeze? We'll investigate coming up here in just a couple of minutes. Looks like we have a big issue on I-35. What's going on, RJ? Yeah, Justin, going on uh, eight hours or so, if I do my math correctly, yes. We had this 18-wheeler crash there just after 1 o'clock this morning that had shut down all of 35 for our entire morning commute. And uh, we do see some traffic in through here, at least one lane here, 35 northbound at Space Center. So there was an 18-wheeler that crashed with another vehicle earlier this morning. Uh, there were some chemicals that spilled on the roadways, so they had to get the hazmat crew out there later on in the morning. and. Uh, uh, we still have this ongoing situation out there. You can see that 18 wheeler is still there on its side, uh, rolled over earlier this morning. So I want to show you a couple different camera angles here. So we do see some traffic moving through there at I-35 Space Center. This is a little bit further south at I-35 at Bamsey. So what they're doing right now is that they're actually redirecting traffic from the Ritterman Road exit back onto 35 North at Bamsey. So that's the traffic that we just saw a little while ago. And here's basically what it looks like if you get a little bit further south on 35 Benzingham. So again, traffic being diverted off onto Ritterman Road, but it is going back on that one lane of 35. So if you still need to head through that area, just keep this in mind that uh, you are still going to run into some pretty significant delays out here. Traffic has been backed up all the way to the Frost Bank Center Drive for some time now. And on 410 side, you can see it's been backed up all the way to I-10. All right, some other things that we're going to follow or let you know about during our 9 o'clock hour here. We have a crash, I-10 eastbound at 35, uh, downtown area, always kind of busy during this time, but uh, again, I-10 eastbound 35, we have a crash being reported there. Closer to the airport, Loop 410 eastbound, Nacogdoches Road, a stalled vehicle, but not causing any major delays in the moment there. So let's see if we get back down here. And we have a stalled vehicle being reported, 281 northbound at Bassey Road, right, near, right there, just a little bit north of uh, Hildebrand Avenue. So again, biggest thing that we've continued to follow, uh, this 18 wheeler has been out there for about eight hours and counting or so. They've had hazmat crews out there. And uh, last check, it's still going to be a little while before they fully open I-35, but we'll give you more updates as they become available to us. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. We appreciate it. Thank you, RJ. Here's today's 9 at 9. It's being called the most sweeping border security package in decades, but it appears to be going nowhere. In a meeting with Republicans last night, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell reportedly recommended a no vote on the first procedural vote set for tomorrow, hours after he advocated for the bill on the Senate floor. Mudslides and floods continue tormenting the western U.S. today. A historic and deadly atmospheric river is stretching east while still plaguing California. Nevada and Arizona could also see flooding today. And winter weather is a concern in those states as well as New Mexico, Utah, Colorado, Idaho, and Wyoming. Jury deliberations are resuming this morning in the case of Jennifer Crumbly, whose son carried out the deadly school shooting in Michigan in 2021. Jurors deliberated for six hours yesterday before being adjourned for the night. Crumbly is facing four counts of involuntary manslaughter. It's the first of his kind case, testing the limits of how far prosecutors can go to hold parents responsible for their children's crimes. 
News that King Charles has cancer dominated headlines in Great Britain, but Buckingham Palace is not saying what kind of cancer or what stage. It did say the 75-year-old monarch began regular treatments yesterday, one week after being treated for an enlarged prostate. Doctors found a separate issue during that treatment and further tests identified a form of cancer. The palace insists it is not prostate cancer. Flu season isn't over yet. The CDC says activity is starting to pick up again as respiratory virus levels remain high overall in the U.S. A surge of flu activity after the winter holidays is common, but health officials say it's still not clear if this is the start of a full second wave or a minor blip. With Fed Chair Jerome Powell saying we're still likely in for three interest rate cuts this year, banks are now gearing up for what they think will be a jump in demand for loans. As according to a new survey from the Federal Reserve, they say demand started to tick up late last year. YouTube TV is expanding support for its highest video quality yet. The 1080p enhanced option is now available on many channels for users with updated 4K compatible streaming devices. The boosted quality initially started appearing last year ahead of this wider rollout. Tinder is out with new warnings. The advisories will notify younger users when they are being inappropriate. Tinder says the warnings will be three categories, authenticity, respectfulness, and inclusiveness. The updates will specifically target the app's main users ages 18 to 25. Southwest Airlines is revamping its interior. The refresh will affect new aircraft deliveries starting next year. Among the new features are multi-adjustable headrest cushions, personal electronic device holders, in-seat power ports, and larger overhead bins. Southwest employee uniforms also will be getting a makeover, and that's today's 9 at 9. In your morning headlines, two American icons have passed away. Country star Toby Keith and a man who you will recognize even though you may not know his name. And are school buses going to be the way of the past? Well, David Sears is here with your morning headlines. Good morning. Say it ain't so. School buses? Right? No, they got to be around forever. But it is, it is a very sad day, so let's start with that. It's a sad day. Country music has lost an iconic singer and songwriter. Toby Keith has passed away after a battle with stomach cancer. A statement on his website says he passed feastfully Monday, surrounded by family. He was diagnosed with cancer in 2022. He was actually performing in Las Vegas this past December. Should have been a cowboy. How do you like me now? Red Solo Cup, courtesy Red, White and Blue. I love this bar. We could go on and on and on. Toby had 32 number one hits. He also took several trips to war zones to perform for the troops during the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. He leaves behind his wife, Tricia, three children and four grandchildren. Toby Keith was 62. And speaking of icons, we lost another one. We will never forget three days after the attacks on 9-11, the man who stood with then President George Bush arm in arm on a rig while Bush addressed the first responders yards from where those two towers fell. His name, Bob Beckwith. He passed away overnight. He actually came out of retirement from the fire department at age 69 after the attack. He went right down to the site to help. The shot of those two was made famous on the cover of magazines. There's a wax figure. During the visit by Bush, Beckwith climbed upon that fire truck to see if he could see Bush. And then all of a sudden, there he was. He comes right in front of me and he puts his arm up. I said, holy Jesus, I, I pull him up on a rig and I turn him around. He got a little spot there. I turn, you okay, Mr. President? He said, yeah. Here's what President Bush posted on X. I was proud to have Bob by my side at ground zero days later and privileged to stay in touch with this patriot over the years. He went on to call him a decent, humble man. Beckwith's grandson said he wasn't afraid of anything. He's a firefighter. Beckwith actually passed away from illnesses that were related to 9-11. He was 91. If you live in a neighborhood with an elementary school or middle school, you know in the mornings and in the evenings, you're gonna see more cars lined up for blocks. Mom, dad, another relative waiting to drop off the, or pick up their student. And somebody driving by is gonna go, why aren't you riding the bus? We're paying tax money for those buses. Well, in some part of the country and even here in the area, there are now more cars than school buses taking kids to school. According to the Washington Post, there are more students getting to school in private vehicles than on the yellow school bus for the first time in history. According to the Federal Highway Administration, 53% of students either got a ride or drove themselves to school back in 2022. 
several reasons. The pandemic, parents started driving their kids rather than put them on a crowded bus. They wanted to make sure those kids got back to class. Bus drivers didn't want to work because of the health threat. And now some of those bus drivers are using those commercial driver's license, those CDLs, to get a higher paying job. So you always see just about every school district in Santa Tony is always advertising. We need school bus drivers. Yeah, they're hiring so, almost year round now. So I guess it's almost like you have to take your kids to school because the bus may not be coming by yeah. your house. Like it it's starting to add up. So. When you mentioned you make a yeah. good argument there about how the pandemic changed things in a big way. Yeah, it did. School bus drivers, great retirement plan. OK, sounds good. Got that on my list. You had I was going to say you had a, a minute of driving a school bus. A year and a half when I was in high school. We yeah. can go through that. We can do that story all over again. <laughs> I drove the school bus in high school in South Carolina. They had let the students drive them in the 70s and cool. I guess early 80s. Wow. I'm sure you were a safe driver. Was it a yellow school bus? It was or, a yellow school bus. Blue bus. Lights was blue bus. It was not standard. I mean, it was standard. It was not okay. automatic. So you had to learn how to wow. shift gears and Roll back at the at the at the uh, railroad crossing, yep. so you had to like you know pop the clutch, and then you yeah. got you know grind it. If you can't find it, grind it. That's what the students <laughs> always in the back used to say. You'd be oh, good. That's to get cool. Into, and now David can drive anything. Awesome. Well, Man of many hats. We'll there try a tank tomorrow. David, thank you. <laughs> 909, 51 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at 9. Well, a San Antonio couple is sharing their harrowing experience after they said they were drugged while on vacation in Mexico. They now want their story to serve as a warning to others taking a trip across the border. Plus, being deployed with U.S. Army led one man to find his true passion, astronomy. How he's now working with a UTSA professor and other students to examine the findings from NASA's James Webb Space Telescope. And don't forget, we are just a couple of days away from the kickoff of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. If you are a KSET insider, don't forget to get your free grounds admission ticket for opening day on Thursday. We have a story on our website with all of those details, but you have to be a KSET insider to get that deal. If you're not a member, signing up is super easy, so don't miss out. We collaborate with people from Alaska all the way to Japan and many places in between. We have a whole series of students, postdocs and early career researchers and everybody's just marveling at these images. For months, a UTSA professor of astrophysics and students have been finalizing or rather analyzing mesmerizing images from NASA's James Webb Space Telescope. They've made discoveries using a technique to enhance the image quality. And our Tiffany Huerta shares how one of the students involved in this project says his passion for science was sparked during a military deployment. My passion for astronomy sort of came back uh, to light when I was in, uh, in Afghanistan on patrols at night. Mason Leist says growing up, he was always curious about astronomy. But while deployed in Afghanistan with the U.S. Army, his passion for science grew stronger. We would look up at the sky and uh, very, very dark skies, very, very pretty skies. Um, but that's sort of where my, my interest was rekindled. After returning to the U.S., Leist went back to school. I served uh, active duty army and then I separated from the military in 2015, uh, enrolled in the Alamo Colleges, uh, and then transferred to UTSA. At UTSA, he earns a bachelor's degree in physics and a master's degree in physics. Then his journey led him to a unique project, studying images from NASA's James Webb Space Telescope. It is incredibly humbling uh, to be a part of, not, not, not just to be a part of our, our paper that we publish, which I, I tell people represents the efforts of uh, 35 people from institutes in 14 different countries, uh, but also be a part of this, this telescope. The UTSA graduate research assistant led a study published in the astronomical journal on the best method to improve these images. Uh, what we have done using uh, advanced uh, image processing techniques uh, known as deconvolution is we've uh, enhanced some of the faint dust features uh, within this galaxy. Leist worked with UTSA professor of astrophysics, Chris Packham. What we're discovering by using these images is we're peering into the very centers of these supermassive black holes and we're seeing the interaction of the galaxy with that black hole and we're seeing how gas and 
and dust are being devoured and falling into that black hole. Packham says they are just getting started. We have new images coming from uh, the JWST. We've been allocated more time in the future to use the telescopes. Leist has a message for students with an interest in science. Stay motivated and continue continue to be curious. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Let's look out there with live cam. We started in the 40s. It was really cold. It actually felt like February, but now in the 50s, not too bad. Yeah, feels okay at the moment. It's going to turn into a pretty nice day. And by the way, uh, those folks you just heard from there, uh -huh. we talked to them a little bit about the eclipse happening in April, too. Ah. So they're very excited about that. You got the telescope. You got the... Uh, the eclipse happening, it's all its all good. They're ready. Science is, is happening this year in a big way, so we love it. Uh, but yes, back to the forecast. It is nice out there. We're going to see a pretty nice day. And I want to show you the average last freeze. We got an email about this asking, hey, when are we going to see our last freeze? Has it happened? Look, we can't say that unequivocally. These are just averages, and we've seen freezes as late as March and April. Okay, so uh, take this with a grain of salt. But if you're looking at the average over the last... We usually use a 30-year uh, span here. And the average last freeze for San Antonio is February 24th. You get into the Hill Country, the average last freeze is typically in March. Uh, but these dates kind of vary, obviously. Uh, but late February is kind of what we're looking at for the average last freeze. Doesn't mean that's how it'll play out this year, but that's the average. Uh, and we'll continue to keep you updated. I can tell you that there is no freeze in the forecast uh, this week or in the foreseeable future. Time lapse, beautiful sunrise. We haven't had really any clouds this morning. And uh, it's always fun to watch the commute kind of get really thick and then lighten up towards there, there at the end. Uh, but the temperatures are nice right now. As we look out over the airport, uh, we can see temperatures right at 50 degrees. 52 New Braunfels, 49 still in Seguin, 46 in Bernie, 41 in Kerrville and not a lot of wind out there. Here's our forecast today, noontime 62. We're up to 67 at 2 p.m. and then we'll make our way up close to 70 this afternoon, mostly sunny, and then uh, falling back down into the 50s tonight. It'll be another cool night, but not as cold as this morning. And then we'll start to deal with a little bit of fog tomorrow. Reason for that, moisture will start to stream back in out ahead of our next storm system. You've probably heard about this one by now. It's a big one out west. A lot of rain and snow. And uh, still raining in L.A. Uh, they have got all sorts of flood problems there now. And this is that typical kind of El Nino pattern that we've gotten ourselves into here, where it is far more active uh, kind of across the southern half of the United States. And that certainly is uh, uh, taking shape there in California. So this low, as you see here, that is causing all the rain and snow, will start to push north and the east. Uh, this will maybe bring a shower or two to our forecast on Thursday, but it doesn't do a whole lot for us. It's a second area of low pressure that moves in that gives us a little better shot at rain. This one moves a little bit further south as we get into the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. With that said, we're still only talking about a 30% chance here. This is not like the last couple of rain events where we've got a set time frame where we're going to get a ton of rain out of this. I don't think that's the case here, but we do have some rain chances mixed in over the weekend. So if you have plans, it is something you want to watch. Dew points, they'll continue to climb. That's why we're going to start to see some of the uh, fog and drizzle as we get into Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, the dew points peak. And then over the weekend, uh, we'll eventually get a front through. It's still kind of a questionable as to when exactly it moves through. But we think by Sunday and the Monday, we'll start to see some drier air. Certainly by Monday, and it uh, clears out. So 70 tomorrow, 71 Thursday. Watch for some fog and drizzle Thursday morning. Friday, we'll go with a uh, 10 to 20 percent chance of rain, but a little better shot over the weekend. 30 percent chance both Saturday and Sunday. Temperatures are steady. I mean, we're right around 70 each and every day until we get to Monday when that cold front works through and cools us down a little bit, but still no freeze in the forecast. All right, Justin, before we go to break, we do want to mention some breaking news. Uh, that's right. It's former President Trump's claim of presidential immunity from prosecution in the 2020 election interference case was rejected by an appeals court. Uh, much more coming up in later newscasts, and of course, on World News Tonight with David Muir. Right now, 920, 53 degrees. And it was a terrible accident during childhood that changed a local man's life, but now his memory will live on. Why the medical research he started could save kids who nearly drowned from living out life the way he did. 
The name of a local man who spent nearly his entire life in a wheelchair will be remembered forever by survivors of near drownings. Conrad Tullis died almost two years ago, but now will have the condition he suffered from bearing his name. Ursula Perry explains what Conrad syndrome is and why the groundbreaking medical research he started may save kids at the scene of an accident from being locked in darkness. Conrad Tullis was a normal 17-month-old baby. He fell into a pool and his life and that of his family changed forever. Emergency medical personnel did everything according to the book, but now that book is changing. But then he smiled. The new book is entitled Conrad Syndrome, a new name for a little understood condition. Instead of a vegetative state, researchers were able to see that near drowning victims like Conrad had awake, active minds. They were locked in, unable to move or speak, but are aware of their surroundings. Conrad passed away at the age of 20, a lifespan no one could have predicted. He finished high school, and through it all, his brain was being studied at UT Health San Antonio, along with 153 other patients. The team, headed up by neurologist Peter Fox, found 60% of children were classified as locked in by family caregivers. Children admitted to the hospital after non-fatal drownings had better outcomes if their hospital stay required no medical intervention, such as intubation. And if the child was responsive, not in a coma, at admission or at discharge, their outcome turned out better. I spoke with Conrad's mother, who says the family is incredibly honored to have this syndrome now being referred to as Conrad syndrome, a condition that they tried so hard to bring to light for families all across the country and the world. There's much more to this study at UT Health San Antonio, and you can read about it in pediatric neurology by just going to our website, ksat.com. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. 925, 53 degrees. More ahead on GMSA at 9. Including a local program that is looking for volunteers to continue teaching children how to read. Plus, a San Antonio couple trying to get back home after their trip to Mexico turned into a nightmare. Let's look out there with live cam. Turning out to be a pretty day again. We're so lucky here uh, this month of February been good so far and uh, we're going to see some pretty nice weather coming up other than uh, we're going to see a bit more cloud cover. I think Mike showed this picture this morning on GMSA but uh, it's a cool one. Uh, that is and I think I'm saying this correctly a caracara bird which if memory serves these uh, typically live down in Mexico but make their way up into South Texas on occasion and uh, they're always cool to see because they're you know kind of bigger birds uh, and, and this is a, a great shot of one close-up shot of a crested caracara named Reggie, apparently. Uh, we appreciate you sending that picture in, uh, as always. And as we look at temperatures across the country, nothing that's really cold, honestly. Even Caribou and International Falls, which are always the cold spots, are not uh, in that bad of shape. Cup Bank wins the award this morning, 18 up there in Montana. But the rest of the country, honestly, is dealing with mild weather. Uh, that includes here in Texas. we got 40s and 50s, and we'll make our way up close to 70 this afternoon. Uh, here's a look at the forecast temperatures, and yeah, we may see a few high clouds here and there, but uh, nothing that's going to scour out the sun too much. There's the uh, 4 o'clock temperature, 69 here in San Antonio, some 70s certainly on the map today. What about rain chances? Uh, when do we expect them and how much rain can we see? That's uh, coming up here in just a couple minutes. Justin, thank you. Taking a quick look at TransSky, we still got the big problem over by Brook Army Medical Center, but good news is at least one lane is now open northbound 35 at Space Center. That's right near the 410 South cutoff. This is the incident we've been tracking since about one o'clock this morning. It was there through the entire morning commute. Looks like they're making very slow progress. We expect uh, the possibility that that King Kong wrecker you see there on the right hand side of your screen should be able to help get that trailer upright sooner than later. I was yelling for Rachel to wake up, and then she wasn't waking up. And so I, I, I get up and I, I turn her over, and her eyes were rolling back. That was just the beginning of the nightmare. A couple from San Antonio is experiencing. Anthony Grigsby and his girlfriend Rachel Villarreal should have been home about three weeks ago. Instead, they are stuck in Mexico City for what was supposed to be a fun vacation. As Stephanie Jimenez tells us, Rachel's in the hospital fighting for her life after Anthony says she was drugged while they were sightseeing. And now Anthony is praying he and Rachel return home soon. 
January 14th marks the last time Anthony Grigsby saw his girlfriend smile. Anthony and Rachel Villarreal were enjoying a colorful boat ride at Lago Huetzalín in Mexico City. When they arrived at La Isla de las Muñecas, they saw people drinking, so they went to a stand and bought alcohol. They came and presented us with a tray of four shots, two for me, two for her. I'm, I'm taking a picture on Instagram, and then we proceeded to take them. Anthony says after that, they walked around and took in the sights. Everything seemed fine until Rachel began to feel sick. She's kind of complaining of, like, nausea, st uh, stomach aches. And the symptoms intensified. The next day, Anthony says he felt sick. Both thought they were battling food poisoning. But things took a turn for the worse the next day when Anthony says he woke up and found Rachel on the floor unconscious. I get up and I, I turn her over and her eyes were rolling back. That's when I see like three large welts on her head. So Anthony called an ambulance. That was January 16th. Rachel's been in the hospital since. She nearly died. Her kidneys were shutting down. After days in the ICU, doctors told Anthony that Rachel had neurological deterioration, usually associated with strokes. But Anthony's biggest shock came when doctors performed a toxicology screening on Rachel. Results showed that she had meth and ecstasy in her system. After speaking with doctors and retracing their steps, Anthony says this is the last time he remembers them being fine. So he suspects the alcohol they drank that night was tainted. It's still hard for him to believe. This unfortunately happened to us, and this is our story. Thankfully, Rachel is gaining consciousness. Now Anthony says he's focused on making sure they both make it home to San Antonio safely. I just want people to be aware that these things happen and that they need to take a lot of extra precaution when they are traveling out of the country. And that was Stefania Jimenez reporting. And she did get a good update from Anthony yesterday. He said Rachel is finally walking and he's hoping to get her transferred to a hospital in San Antonio later this week. Well, in other news for many people, prioritizing health is a luxury. Those living in poverty or experiencing homelessness have to decide between buying food or getting prescription medications. Courtney Friedman tells us about a new partnership that is setting Haven for Hope clients up for long-term success. I'm just so happy right now. <laughs> Olivia Oliver hasn't been this happy in a long time. We'll tell you why in a bit. But first, let's rewind to five months ago when she could no longer afford her rent and landed at Haven for Hope. I just was not motivated, crying all the time, didn't know why I was crying. Her case management team helped her realize she had depression and anxiety, mental health conditions she knew nothing about. I'm actually taking medications right now and I'm doing so much better. <laughs> She got those meds for free thanks to a brand new partnership between Haven for Hope and the St. Vincent de Paul Pharmacy, which helps uninsured Texans access prescription medications. But this is the, the largest scale um, homeless shelter that we're dealing with by far. St. Vincent de Paul North Texas CEO Luis Gonzalez is thrilled with the feedback so far. And so is Haven's Transformational Services VP David Hewitt. Clients are able to afford their medication, which means they can be stabilized with their physical health care and their mental health care, which allows them to stay housed. Hewitt showed us the mail room where the pharmacy ships the medication. <laughs> then they make it to this room where Haven clients can pick them up. What sets this program aside is even if you leave these Haven doors into new housing, you can take those prescriptions with you as long as you still meet the criteria. Right now, Oliver is volunteering at Haven's Warehouse eight hours a day to keep her mind in work mode while she does job interviews each week. Well, while we were still on the Haven campus, Oliver got some big news. I got the job! <laughs> that is so exciting! I know. <laughs> she starts next week, which will help her housing quickly fall into place, bringing us back to this moment. I'm so happy. <laughs> Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Can't help but smile at that good news. Now, you don't have to be experiencing homelessness to utilize this prescription resource. You can head to the St. Vincent de Paul website to see if you meet the requirements. And we have a link to that on KSAT.com.
And a call for volunteers, members of Harper's Chapel Ministries on Lombrano and Zarzamora say their free after-school program has grown and expanded in popularity so much that they really need volunteers. Now the program runs Monday through Wednesday and they notice the kids are struggling with reading and they'd like to get volunteers with a heart and patience to help them out. Volunteers will be required to go through a background check but would be strongly encouraged to be consistent with their time. That may just be about 15 to 30 minutes to sit and read with children. We found out that all of them need some type of help. Uh, our little ones are more engaged with activities, but our junior high and our middle and our high school are the ones where we're seeing the struggles at. When you show an interest, they in return, you know, begin to to uh, to care and have an interest about themselves. You know, if, if she believes in me, then I can believe in me. That church sits in the 78207 zip code, one of the most impoverished communities in San Antonio. They hope retired educators in the community will answer their call for volunteers. Well, now on to the frenzy in Las Vegas, Nevada, and the Super Bowl is uh, about five days away. Have you seen the light show on the strip? Let's take a look right now here together. And it looks like the famous Bellagio fountain right there. Yeah, very pretty. They're ready to go. ABC's Andrew Denver gets us caught up on all the other events leading up to the big game. Super Bowl mania kicked off in Las Vegas last night. It was a media day unlike any other. This is probably the most people I've seen on an opening ceremony night. 23,000 fans packing into Allegiant Stadium as reporters interviewed the players. Can you guess which one got the most attention? What a time to be alive, baby. Travis Kelsey attracted a bigger crowd than his all-star quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. And most of the questions, not about football. She's unbelievable. She's, uh, she's rewriting the history books herself. The Chiefs tight end was bombarded with questions about his girlfriend, Taylor Swift, one day after her big win at the Grammys. I told her I'll have to hold up my end of the bargain and come home with some hardware, too. Reporters asking him if he's heard her new album. Um, I have heard some of it, yes, and it is unbelievable. I can't wait for uh, her to shake up the world when it finally drops. What his favorite Taylor Swift song is. Right now, I'd probably say anti, anti-hero just because I hear it every single day. And wondering if there may be more than one ring presented this Sunday night. I'm focused on getting this ring, and that's, uh, that's, that's all that my mind's focused on right now. Vegas weddings are out of control, absolutely insane. I don't know if I'll ever have a Vegas wedding. With Swifties joining football fans to watch the big game, advertisers are preparing for a record audience. It's a big commercial. Tell them what it's due. This year's Super Bowl ads are all about celebrities, the Beckhams for Uber Eats. I feel good. And Jeremy Renner, one year after his snowplow accident, in a commercial for Silk. But with Swift Nation expected to be glued to the screen, expect to see more products marketed to women. That's suspicious. Makeup brand NYX is teaming up with Cardi B for its first Super Bowl ad. We're seeing new brands jump in now like we haven't seen. The moment is too unique and too special for them not to, to take advantage of it and for them to sit on the sidelines anymore. I've been summoned. A 30-second Super Bowl commercial costs up to $7 million this year. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. My question for Mr. Kelsey is, is he smart enough to have Taylor as his phone's ringtone or does he have somebody else <laughs> as his ringtone? Uh, I'd go with Taylor. Okay. Yeah, All for right. sure. <laughs> 939, 55 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Here's a look at what's coming up. San Antonio, get your jazz hands ready. One of the biggest Broadway musicals is coming to town. A look at Chicago coming up. Always a great day to go to the zoo. Well, let's check out one of the star attractions, and that would be the Flamingo exhibit. And they're all in the water right now. And why not? Sunny, mid-50s. Yeah. Good day to take a dip. They were active yesterday. They're kind of chilling today. Yeah, it's funny. When they're closer to the camera, they look like really pink. But then when they're off in the water, they don't look as pink. Yeah. Optical illusion. <laughs> things my things The things my brain thinks about. Anyway. I agree, though. <laughs> uh, random thought. Uh, it is going to be nice today, uh, and we're going to see a lot of sun and beautiful weather. And then things start to change a little bit as we get into tomorrow. And the reason for that is moisture. We're going to get the... The uh, moisture coming in from the Gulf of Mexico, and you're going to start to see these dew points rise. So what we're looking at here are dew points, and once you get into the mid-50s, that's when you start to feel it a little bit more. This is Wednesday, tomorrow, 5 p.m., around dinner time. Moisture is beginning to come back. But I think there's even enough moisture tomorrow morning where we could see some brief patchy fog, but more so on Thursday with these dew points really jumping up into the uh, low 60s, which puts us in the muggy category. Uh, and that's what we have to look forward to. Honestly, 
even into the weekend, it's going to be fairly muggy. Let me show you the future cast fog here. Wednesday morning, tomorrow morning, does show it to be patchy, but I think we're going to see some lower visibility in spots could affect your morning commute. It gets a little more widespread on Thursday, and on Thursday, I think this probably comes along with a little bit of drizzle, too. A little bit of dampness Thursday morning, so uh, that's something we'll be watching for in the short term. Uh, right now, we've got temperatures sitting at 50, although I think uh, here pretty soon you're going to see these numbers uh, take some big leaps and will eventually be up into the 60s by lunchtime. 52 New Braunfels, 49 skiing, 52 Bernie, 46 in Kerrville and light winds. Here's a look at that forecast temperature wise. And by noontime, yeah, 62 or so. And then by the afternoon, right around 69. Some places will be in the 70s. There will be a few thin high clouds, but that's it. Not like yesterday where we had those clouds around for a while. It's, uh, it's going to be uh, plenty sunny today. And as we look at the water vapor imagery, uh, you know, water vapor gives us a good indication of where we've got moisture in the mid levels of the atmosphere. And the one thing's for sure, it has been nonstop out around California. You see the spin right there, counterclockwise spin? There's your big low. And then we've got Pacific moisture just kind of funneling in here now. And that's going to shift a little bit further east in the coming days. So we'll see more of these high clouds, uh, a little bit more moisture, and maybe some sprinkles and some light showers as some of this energy gets a little bit closer to us. Right now, it's still well off to the west. So Vegas, Phoenix, Los Angeles, all getting pummeled with rain. And then you've got snow in the higher elevations. The snow ski resorts are loving this uh, because it is coming down really, really hard in uh, many of those spots as this storm system uh, moves a little bit further east. But there's a closer look at it. And there is still heavy rain around Los Angeles this morning, which means there will be more flooding issues. And if you're traveling that way, know that there are plenty of issues uh, up and down the west coast. Now that storm system moves northeast. As we get into Thursday morning, you know, we talked about there will be some fog and drizzle, but uh, it does show maybe a couple showers too, as this piece of energy works well to our north. It's a second area of low pressure that works in behind this one that gives us a little bit better chance of rain as we head into the weekend. I think Saturday and Sunday. Timing's still a little bit difficult here. We're still watching for a frontal boundary as well, but I think it's both of those days where we could see some spotty showers. This is not going to be widespread. It's not going to ruin your weekend plans, uh, but there is some rain around, and we're going to put it at a 30% chance both days before we clear out by Monday. So the extended forecast. Of course, uh, rodeo gets kicked off on Thursday, a little bit drizzly to start, uh, but not bad in the afternoon. And if you're planning, uh, planning on heading out to the rodeo this weekend, uh, take an umbrella just in case, but it's not going to be raining the entire time. Temperatures right around 70 all the way through Sunday before we cool down a little bit to start next week. Thank you, Justin. Chicago is a Broadway classic, and for two weekends, it's being performed here in San Antonio at the Harlequin Theater. Stefania Jimenez gives us a backstage look at the musical. There's something so special about a classic, and Chicago the Musical is that. So when you come here to the Harlequin Theater, I know that you're going to want to get up and dance. People have told me that this is their favorite show, and they can't wait to come see a local community do it, especially on a military base. As a military spouse, like I wanted to come to a, a military base and see something as spectacular as this. And Chicago has great songs. Everybody knows all that jazz. They know when you're good to mama. They know all of these wonderful razzle-dazzle, and they just like to sing along and it's a great place to do it because the Harlequin is the best. People have all, you know, they have their favorite song, they have their favorite character. Um, I don't know, I think it's just something that resonates with everybody with the music. Well, I think there's always been a fascination with the 1920s, that roaring era where everything was bigger and better. Skirts are short and there's so much energy in life. And of course there's murder, so everybody loves to have a little mischief. I was really nervous at first, and I was like, well, you know, let's do this. Like, why not? Like, she's an iconic character, and I feel like I can bring something to her that will be a lot of fun. Chicago runs for two weeks from February 9th through the 18th. For ticket information, you know where to go. Our website, ksat.com. Stefania Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. Break a leg, guys, 949, 56 degrees. And we come back, a look at a new film coming to theaters this weekend, described as an 80s horror rom-com. 
New movie opening this weekend draws on such 80s films such as Heather's, Weird Science, and Beetlejuice, and a certain classic monster movie. CNN's David Daniel gives us a look at the new film, Lisa Frankenstein. I tend to his grave. I talked to him. I wish I was with you. That's really weird, Lisa. Not even death can stop true love. Catherine Newton and Cole Sprouse star in Lisa Frankenstein. He needs some parts. Taffy says it's a waste of time to try and fix a boy. It's better just accept a guy's flaws. And she has a plan. There are bad people out there. Come on, Lisa. It'll feel good. It's going to do terrible things. First time feature director Zelda Williams created a lookbook to bring Diablo Cody's tale set in the late 80s to life. Really hope this goth phase ends soon. There's so many pictures. I did go a little yeah. overboard. <laughs> Zelda really had a very clear vision of what she wanted this film to look like, and I just trusted her completely, and I'm glad that I did because. She, she, despite being a millennial, I believe, mm -hmm. she, she definitely captured the 80s. She didn't need to be there to get it. Williams also had plans for her old pal Sprouse. I sent him to a mime teacher. I wanted him to feel very comfortable in physicality and even in, in odd, awkward physicality. When you think of miming, you think of this. You know, it was much more of um, like emotional movement work. So uh, I can't, you know, I can't hit the streets and start making some money as a mime just yet, but it definitely helped get into the headspace. I can't do that. Not until we bury the body. She just has this madcap physicality about her that she brings to the role that is just so fun to watch. She really gave me the opportunity to discover things that is kind of risky. You have a movie with two young actors as the lead, and it's just, we went crazy. I went insane in this film. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Well, this Sunday is International Day of Women and Girls in Science, and in honor of that, Girls Inc. San Antonio will hold its 18th annual Rocket into the Future Science Festival this weekend. So this is a great way to celebrate women and girls in science and get them involved. So there will be over 30 booths with fun and interactive STEM activities for everyone. The festival will be on Saturday. This is from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at CAST Med High School on the Southeast side. And you can find more information by visiting ksatcommunity.com. If you're headed out of downtown on I-35 as you get past Fort Sam Houston, you're still going to run into a log jam due to one lane only being open on I-35 North at Space Center. They are still look like they're offloading that big rig that uh, flipped around 1 o'clock this morning. You see that big red and white King Kong wrecker is on standby. We haven't got an ETA and when they're going to finally have this clear, but uh, we're hoping it's going to be within the next couple of hours. But keep in mind, this again has been there since... One, yeah, 1 a.m. 1, 1 a.m. Yeah, that's when the wreck happened. Big no. mess. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, all right, forecast today, 69, mostly sunny. We'll get some fog next couple days, at least in the morning time. Uh, and then some small rain chances Thursday and Friday. Nothing that's going to really mess up your plans too bad. Even this weekend, we're just calling for a 30% chance rain, so some spotty showers, maybe a thunderstorm. And then I think we get the opportunity clear out a little bit on Monday. Good weekend to go to the movies and check out what's this movie that uh, we just saw the preview uh, Lisa for? Frankenstein. Lisa Frankenstein. Lisa Frankenstein. Yeah. Yeah. You're excited about that one, huh? I am. It looks cute. I don't, I mean, I don't know. Who doesn't want the 80s? <laughs> I don't know. My husband will want to go. Maybe my daughter, but, you yeah. know. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. Have a great day. Our crews are back here at noon.